So warning, it's gonna get more complicated because we're gonna look at different receptors. I'm not gonna expect you to know a lot of detail and I'm not gonna go over a ton of detail, but I wanna give you some idea of the different types of receptors um, that one single molecule can bind to and that's gonna have different effects on different tissues. I'll give you an example of this later on. So norepinephrine and epinephrine are the two neurotransmitters. They also can act as hormones if they're circulating in the bloodstream. So they're chemical messengers, let's call them, that bind to adrenergic receptors. Adrenergic receptors are receptors that bind to norepinephrine and epinephrine. Now, the different, there's two main types of adrener, adrenergic receptors. I'm gonna do beta receptors first and then alpha receptors. And there are different affinities, so binding freak abilities for each norepinephrine and epinephrine for each of these receptors. So for example, epinephrine binds to both equally. Norepinephrine binds primarily to alpha receptors. I wanna use, I just wanna do an example. So what, I'm just actually gonna do this. This black molecule is going to be either one. And I wanna talk about what happens when this black molecule, um, epinephrine or norepinephrine, norepinephrine binds to its receptor. So beta receptor, when norepinephrine binds to this, first of all, both of these proteins are going to be use indirect mechanisms. So these are not ion channels is what that means. The activation of beta receptors is going to increase CAMP. Right, so we've got our G protein. Ah. It's going to be activated. It's going to activate adenylyl cyclase. This is going to activate CAMP. This is going to change activity of the cells. There's actually two types of beta receptors. I apologize for that. Um, there is beta one. Actually, there's three types, but we're gonna talk about two types and beta two. I'm actually gonna pause here to remove that text that is out of place. So the effects of Norepinephrine or epinephrine binding to the beta-1 receptor is going to be excitatory on the, the tissues where this receptor is located. So this is going to be, for example, increased cardiac muscle. Stimulation. That's one example. Um, that, that's a big one. The binding of norepinephrine or epinephrine to beta-2 receptors is going to inhibit other cells, right? It could turn on a kinase that then turns on um, an inhibitor for another protein, right? So just the, basically you have to be flexible. The effects of CAMP can be anything. So, for example, we could have smooth muscle, doing this in red because this is inhibition, it's an inhibitory effect in, in that smooth muscles are relaxing. Um, for example, in the respiratory passageways, and in skeletal muscles. Does this make sense? When we have a bear running after us, do we want our smooth mu muscles to be relaxing in our respiratory passageways and our skeletal muscles? Hell yes, we want more blood flow to our skeletal muscles. We want more air flow into our lungs. We want our heart beating faster. So makes sense, yeah? Okay, then 
and, and this is actually an example of if you have the same molecule circulating throughout the bloodstream or synapsing out through the different postganglionic cells, it can both excite the heart muscle and relax the smooth muscle of your skeletal, um, I should actually add here, this was our vessels, blood vessels. You can do that both at the same time, the same molecule. And that's the big thing about um, the anus is it's all those responses, not all of them, but depends on other nuance. Multiple are happening at the same time. Fight or flight doesn't just require one response. It requires a coordinated response of multiple body systems. The ANS does that for you. Okay, alpha receptor, we've got norepinephrine or epinephrine binding. And this is gonna be, there are some that do bind camp. I actually um, wanted to give you the example of a different second messenger. I'm just gonna write second messenger. Um, that is going to, actually, it's cal the second messenger is calcium. What? That ion can be a second messenger, having a high level of, of calcium that's stimulated by what? By a G protein still. And I'm not going to go into more detail on the mechanism for that. I'd have to look it up first. Release of calcium, it's actually coming from the ER. Does that make sense? The sarcoplasmic reticulum in muscle stores calcium as well. This is going to small cause smooth, smooth muscle relaxation. I'm sorry, smooth muscle contraction. So for example, in the GI, the gastrointestinal tract, um, that's just, stick with that. Um, also going to dilate the pupils. There's a, a couple examples of ways that we are getting those responses we talked about in the previous video. Obviously not complete. You don't understand every single step of this pathway. If you want to look them up, great. 